Hello everybody. Today we have to talk about a very important area in the history of English literature. It is the beginning of modern English literature, the period of the Renaissance. The Renaissance is now also called early modern period. This is the time when the Middle Ages changed into humanistic period. There was a new interest in the human being, a new belief in the centrality and dignity of man. This was also the time when people began to question oppression and marginalization. This resulted in reformation of the Catholic Church. The Renaissance it is a French word. It means the rebirth of the human spirit. As all of you would know, the Renaissance started in the 14th century and went on to its peak in the 16th century. A high point of the Renaissance was the fall of Constantinople. As I have said elsewhere in a video, Constantinople was the capital of the Byzantine Empire. Do you remember what is Byzantine Empire? Remember the Roman Empire had divided into Eastern Roman Empire and Western Roman Empire. The Western Roman Empire fell in the beginning of the 5th century. The Eastern Roman Empire is the Byzantine Empire with its capital at Constantinople. In 1453, the Ottoman Turks from the Middle East, the Persians, they came and attacked Constantinople. At that time in the Middle Ages, the Persians were very powerful. The Europeans and the Arabs were fighting continuously. That means the Christians and the Muslims. This had started in the 12th century, 11th century with the Crusades. And then what happened in the 15th century, 1453 year, Constantinople, the center of European culture and activity fell to the Ottoman Turks. The Ottomans obviously wanted to destroy the culture of Constantinople. They are the enemies. They attacked the monasteries and libraries. All the learning of the ancient ages were preserved in these monasteries in the form of manuscripts. Scribes or copyists had written down many copies of manuscripts and books. They were all preserved in the monasteries and libraries of Constantinople. They were going to be destroyed. My God, a lot of people from Europe came and tried to protect these manuscripts. Our Petrarch, for example, Petrarch the author of Canzonier, the practitioner of the sonnets. He is the father of humanism because he preserved these manuscripts and he led to a new age dawning across Europe, the age of the Renaissance. So the Renaissance involved political upheavals, Upheavals in the realm of knowledge or epistemological upheavals, religious upheavals in the nature of reformation. All this was felt in every walk of life. Everything changed, the philosophy changed, art and literature changed. There was a lot of experimentation. Literatures in the vernacular began across Europe in every European country. Amazing it was, a period of great beginnings in every realm of human activity. The Renaissance started from the fountainhead of European literature, Dante. Dante was the author of the Divine Comedy, Monarchia, La Vita Nova. So many books of Dante are important, followed by Petrarch. Petrarch is the author of Canzonier or a book of Canzoni poems. Canzoni is a meter. Dante started writing sonnets for the first time ever and Petrarch perfected it. Petrarch 
was also the author of an epic poem called Africa. Will you please read extra about all these writers? Very important. And then Boccaccio, the first prose writer of any European language. Decameron, Philostrato, Philocolo, Tessida. Huh, all these works influenced Chaucer. In fact, it was Boccaccio who called Divine Comedy, Divine Comedy. Before that, Dante called it Commedia. Divina Commedia. That is Petrarch's title. Sorry, Boccaccio's title. These people influence English writers. And in England, there was the nest of singing birds. So many brilliant writers emerged in England at this time. Philip Sidney, Edmund Spencer, University Wits, Shakespeare, Ben Johnson, John Donne, Francis Bacon. In England, there were so many important new genres. All developed from European masters. For example, Philip Sidney wrote Arcadia. It developed from San Azaro's Arcadia. Edmund Spencer wrote Fairy Queen. It was modeled on Ariosto's Orlando Furioso. Christopher Marlowe created Machiavellian villains who didn't care for ethics. In order to get their ends, they would resort to any means. The ends justify the means. Unethical approach actually. actually. This came from Niccolo Machiavelli's The Prince. In Spain, there were Cervantes who wrote Don Quixote. These are the European masters of the Renaissance. They started traditions like Petrarch and sonneteering. Petrarch wrote sonnets, 14 line lyric poems. Petrarch and sonnets are divided into octave and sestet. Octave is eight lines, sestet is six lines. The octave and sestet are separated by a pause or seshora. The Petrarch and sonnet took the form of the English sonnet or Shakespearean sonnet. The Petrarchan sonnet was introduced into England by Thomas Wyatt. While blank verse, another experiment, was introduced into England by Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey. Now guys, Petrarchan sonneteering led to an explosion of sonneteers in England, throughout England. So many people writing about love, friendship, mortality, so many themes. So many sonneteers will come to that presently. And then what is the other genre? That is very important, tell me. All of you know, Hamlet, Othello, King Lear, Macbeth, tragedy, Senecan tragedy. Shakespeare himself wrote too. His first tragedy, Titus Andronicus. Titus Andronicus by Shakespeare. First tragedy, oh my God, bloody revenge tragedy and then Hamlet guys tell me what are tragedies like in the renaissance period in England you will be surprised to know renaissance tragedies are anti-classical you know why for the sheer reason that the renaissance writers in England did not know the classical rules properly. <laughs> they just wrote whatever they wanted, mostly. Copied from other writers, they took themes from other writers of course. But they did not follow classical rules. And so they were called romantic tragedies. Shakespeare wrote romantic tragedies and romantic comedies, you might know that. Sonnets, tragedies, these are not the two only Major genres, one more is the epic. The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. The first great epic in English. Valorizing the Tudor dynasty and Elizabethan rule. Queen Elizabeth is 
depicted as a fairy queen then there was the tradition of the pastoral sydney's pastoral arcadia is the best example so so many important genres of this period now let me tell you a little bit about the important writers of this period okay first and foremost wyatt and surrey thomas wyatt a nobleman henry howard earl of surrey another nobleman both of them died very young but as i already told you they introduced very important conventions in english wyatt introduced petrarchan sonnet surrey introduced blank verse if in case anybody among you does not know what is blank verse i will tell you remember the most important meter in english is i am big pentameter i am big pentameter means what penta means 5 hai na penta means 5 feet in every foot there are two syllables two syllables two syllables two syllables two syllables two syllables 10 syllables deca syllabic line it is and every foot of two syllables is an iamb iamb means unstressed syllable followed by stressed syllable didum 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 means what d is unstressed dum is stressed famous example in english elegy grace elegy when curfew tolls the knell of parting day when ka wherever i am putting the tala the rhythm falls the stress falls that is the stressed syllable when ka few tolls the knell of parting day what do you mean by that Ry- uh, rhythmic line or iambic pentameter is musical you can put music to it only if it maintains rhythm stress the syllables should come at equal intervals i am big pentameter you got it now didn't you i am big pentameter when it comes without any rhyme in verse paragraphs any number of lines that is called blank verse blank because there's no rhyme i am big pentameter that rhymes in pairs is called what chaucer introduced it heroic couplets i am big pentameter that rhymes in pairs i am big pentameter lines when they come in stanzas of seven lines it is called chaucerian stanza rhyme royal are so many stanzas most of them iambic pentra- pentameter only but in english many writers used iambic tetrameter also in memoriam stanza remember have you heard of that tennyson's in memoriam was written in iambic tetrameter stanzas so guys we have wyatt and surrey another important writer of the renaissance is thomas more you might know thomas more is the author of utopia utopia is a greek word nowhere land you know it is an ideal world where everybody is equal everything happens in a picture perfect manner thomas more's utopia written in 1516 in latin translated into english in 1551 by ralph robinson very important text prose text and then there was john skelton a poet who wrote very rugged verse conversational verse his verse is called skeltonic verse his famous book is the book of philip sparrow rugged re- re- conversational verse that inspired later john dun john skelton he was also a very famous poet and almost like a poet laureate then guys there were many sonnetiers many of them Sydney wrote sonnets sonnet sequences sonnet sequence means 
Sonnets will be written about one story only, one love affair. Sydney sonnet sequence is Astrophel and Stella. Don't worry, we'll talk about it in detail in one of the coming videos. And then Spencer, Edmund Spencer wrote Amority. Samuel Daniel, Michael Drayton. Like that, so many sonneteers were there. And do you know guys? These sonnets and songs or songs and sonnets were collected together from various writers for the first time and the first anthology in English was made. Published by Richard Total on 5th June 1557. That book is called Total's Miscellany. Total's Miscellany contained 271 poems. The original title was Songs and Sonnets. Later, it came to be called Total's Miscellany. So, this is the Renaissance period. In the early Renaissance period, there were lots of developments which in the late Renaissance period led to massive changes in society and lifestyle. And in England, the Tudor dynasty was ruling during the Renaissance. In the medieval period, within the Plantagenet dynasty, there was the war between two houses of the Plantagenet, Lancaster and York. This is called Wars of the Roses, 1455 to 85. Wars of the Roses came to an end with the Battle of Bosworth. When Henry Tudor killed Richard III and established the Tudor dynasty. Henry Tudor became the first Tudor king, Henry VII. Henry VII was succeeded by his son, Henry VIII. Have you heard of Henry VIII? Very important writer because he established Anglican England, Anglican Church. Very important king because he established Anglican Church. Henry VIII declared himself the head of the church by the Act of Supremacy, 1535. Henry VIII was the father of Edward VI, who became king after Henry. Mary I, she was the daughter of Catherine of Aragon. First wife of Henry, Henry had divorced Catherine of Aragon and married Anne Boleyn. That is how Reformation came to England. Let me explain once again. Reformation was a religious movement. It was started in Germany by Martin Luther. Martin Luther pasted 95 theses at the Wittenberg Cathedral against the Catholic Church. Martin Luther started Reformation. This Reformation came to England in the time of Henry VIII. Got it guys? Henry VIII wanted to divorce his wife Catherine of Aragon. Divorce was not permitted at that time. The, uh, the Pope did not allow him to divorce. He did not care for the Pope. Henry VIII asked the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer to give him divorce. And he established Anglican Church. Henry VIII became the head of the Anglican Church by the Act of Supremacy. He divorced Catherine of Aragon, married Anne Boleyn. Catherine of Aragon's daughter is Queen Mary I, who came to power after Edward VI. So Henry VIII, Edward VI, Mary I. And when Mary I died childless, Elizabeth I, Elizabethan period it is. Elizabeth was the last of the Tudor monarchs. This is the Renaissance period in England. Elizabethan period is the brilliant period, is the golden age of English literature. Elizabethan age was followed by the Jacobian age, the rule of James I. And it was in the Jacobian period 
that Shakespeare and many other important Elizabethan writers produced their best works. Did you know that Shakespeare wrote all his best works in the Jacobian period? But he is still called an Elizabethan writer. Now, why is that? Because Shakespeare had an Elizabethan sensibility. Jacobian sensibility means corruption, evil, very bad. Because the times were very bad, full of, you know, turmoil and unrest. Elizabethan period is very stable. Belief in God is there. Good people always win. Bad people are punished. This kind of Elizabethan thinking or sensibility is there in Shakespeare. That is why Shakespeare is called an Elizabethan writer. And Renaissance is, a, as, is at its peak in the Elizabethan period. Slowly Renaissance came to an end by the time of John Milton. That is in the 17th century. So did you understand this story of the Renaissance guys? I will continue the story when I deal with each of the major writers separately. The next video will be on Edmund Spencer, one of the greatest of the Elizabethan writers. Until then, bye bye. Read on your own. Come back for the next video. Bye everybody.